Number one. And this happened when I was in my early teens in the late 80s. My family lived in a very secluded, forested area. We had a long driveway, and our small home sat on a square acre of mowed grass with woods on two sides. I was alone late one night, talking with a buddy of mine from school. I often rode my bike to town over the summer, and he invited me to come over and spend the night. It was a 20 mile trip over completely empty country roads, but it was always an adventure and I seldom hesitated to go when I had a place to stay. I told him sure, I was on my way. I'd call my mother at work and then start my ride. Here's where it gets creepy. Once I hung up the phone and started getting dressed, all black, I picked up the phone again to call my mum. The line was dead. This had never happened before. It was a sturdy rotary phone and we never had problems with it. My thoughts instantly went to the small phone box on the back of the house. It was a tiny, round junction with nothing but a rubber covering. Behind the cover was the exposed connection between the phone pole and on our inside line. The wires were twisted together and capped, but completely vulnerable. I question why I would even think about that. Why would I jump to conclusions about the cause of the dead line? I was overwhelmed with a sense of dread that didn't make any sense, and I was wrestling with my feelings. I decided to behave as though I was in real danger but calm myself by focusing on how unlikely it was and how my imagination was probably getting the best of me. But I could not shake the feeling that I was in trouble. I finished dressing and strapped a buck knife to my hip, the old Rambo knives with the compass in the stock. It was cheap, but very big. I moved quietly and planned how I would leave the house. I remember this very well. I would slide out of the front door and pull it closed behind me, locked. I would not be able to get back in. I would then grab my bike from against the wall on the enclosed porch, spin around and use my elbow to press the button of the handle on the screen door and jump down the concrete steps. I'd hop on my bike and speed down the driveway. It was very dark outside, but there were bright lights in the front and rear of the house that created big pools in the yard. That's all the light that I would have. I executed my maneuver just as I planned, but my elbow slipped off of the button on the handle and banged into the door as it opened and within seconds I was pumping down the gravel drive. I then turned my head to the left filling my ears with the roar of the air as I was cutting through and stopped pedaling, my eyes fixed on the rear of the house. And I was 100% sure that someone was coming. I don't know how or why. It was only a moment that I didn't look away despite my own skepticism. And at the last instant, I saw him. A man wearing dark clothes and a ski mask, came tearing out of the lit yard around the back of the house and plunged into the deep shadow along the side, heading for the front, where I had been only seconds ago. I was invisible wearing black from head to toe and instead of running straight for me, he went for the porch where the commotion that I'd just made came from. I turned forward and leaned into the pedals. I could barely see the driveway but I had ridden my bike down it many times at night and I could make out the large stone gate posts before the dirt road. I almost crashed, turning the corner, but recovered and sped away. About a mile further, I finally stopped at the intersection to a paved road. My heart was pounding in my chest and my forehead was sweaty. I stood there for a bit and got my breathing under control while I tried to digest what had just happened. My thoughts were racing. I knew damn well what I saw. But now I was out of danger. All I could do was press on. My neighbors were Amish. No phones. And I wouldn't have known what to say anyway. When I got to my friend's house much later, I told him what had happened and called my mother. She listened and didn't give me a hard time. 
that I could tell that she didn't know what to think. She wouldn't be home till morning and said that she'd be careful. And that was it. I had heard laughter once from the edge of the woods and things in the backyard had been moving occasionally, but no one else had these experiences and I assumed it was backwards Amish kids fooling around. Nothing ever really happened before. I doubt Amish kids would know how to disconnect a phone line. Number 2 This happened when I was around 12 years old, in the early 2000s. My dad had passed away about two years prior, leaving my mum, sister and myself. To help me cope with my father's passing, my mum took me to the animal shelter to pick out a dog, since having a large dog was something that I always wanted. In one of the cages was a small shepherd husky, huddled in the corner that I right away fell in love with. When this incident that I'm about to tell you happened, he was about one years old, 90 pounds, and my best friend. My mum worked nights, and my older sister, taking advantage that my mum wasn't home, would constantly leave me home alone. I didn't mind though, because then she wouldn't be bossing me around, since when she was home, she would try to be my mum, telling me what to do and when to sleep. We lived in a small middle class suburb, with a low crime rate, so I wasn't scared to be home alone. I was sitting in the living room playing video games, and got up, heading to the kitchen to grab a drink. In the kitchen, I had a clear view through the back door, and could see the garage door was open. Thinking that I just left it open after putting my bike away, I headed out of the door to close it. My dog was sleeping in the basement, since he liked to lay on the cool concrete floor during the summer months and I didn't think to take him out with me. I step out of the door into the garage and make it about five feet. When I notice in the darkness a crouched shadow moving in the garage. I froze, trying to get my eyes to adjust to make out what the shadow was. It finally hit me when I saw the figure stand up and turn towards me. I was terrified and felt like I had been glued to the spot. I knew that this person could see me since the back porch light was shining above me. At that moment, the figure started running towards me. I was too scared to move and let out more of a yelp than a scream. But that was all it took for my dog to hear. And the next thing I hear is him behind me, snarling and growling. I could make it out that it was a man, but I couldn't make out any features, when all of a sudden he was now frozen. He saw this 90 pound beast behind me. He turned and ran for the back fence with my dog right behind him. The guy barely just made it to the fence, and it was only about 4 feet so he just hopped over it before my dog got to him. After he got away, my dog came running back to me, and I went inside where I barricaded the doors. I don't know why, but I didn't call the cops and never told my mum or sister what had happened. One thing that bothered me though, was that he had to have known that I was inside since the lights were on and the blinds open. So why take the risk to hit a house when someone was clearly home? The next morning, after my mum was home, I went inside to finally close the garage and noticed that what he had been going through was my dad's toolbox. I locked up the garage and never told anyone what had happened. I walked my dog to McDonald's and got him a burger and an ice cream cone for being my hero. Number 3 This happened a few weeks ago and I'm still a bit shaken up by it. My husband and I like to go on long drives in the desert with our dog. We live outside Las Vegas and are fortunate enough to live in a city with abundant beautiful areas to stargaze and use a telescope. 
My husband just got a telescope for his birthday in October, so he was excited to try it out. We drove our Kia up to a popular overlook, and he took out the telescope. He showed me a bunch of constellations and we saw a shooting star. The doggo sat in the car, two windows rolled down. My dog is a bitch, straight up. They weren't kidding when they named female dogs that. She's an American cattle dog, and she's saved my ass before from a home invasion. She's very protective of both me and her dad. Anyway, my husband had to go and pee and he told me to wait in the car for him. So, I got in and locked the door. Meanwhile, I'm browsing Reddit, when I hear gravel moving. Thinking that it was my husband, I remark, that was fast. Suddenly, my dog goes berserk, she's snarling and barking. So, I turn around, and there is a man that is not my husband. The dumb guy makes a mistake by putting his hand through the window when there is a crazy 63 pound dog sitting in it. She grabs hold of his hand and he's screaming for his life. I'm screaming and my husband is yelling that he's coming and running towards us, with pants half on. The dog lets his arm go and the guy takes off as I call the cops. My husband tries chasing after the guy, but he's a big dude at about 63 and 280 pounds, and this guy was fast, so he couldn't catch him. Anyway, the cops do show up. They tell us that they will look out for the guy, but to maybe stay away from the area at night. The cops in our town are a joke. The doggo, she got a cup of Dairy Queen that night. Number 4 This happened when I was a teenager, around 14 or 15 in high school. I had a boyfriend at the time who lived a fairly short walk from the school and we would often walk to his place after school ended and hang out for a few hours before I went home. Because we took the same route so often, I knew all of the houses and landmarks in the way. In January, I live in the north so the winter is pretty cold and snowy, my boyfriend and I started to notice a car that had been parked in the same spot for a while. We thought nothing of it at the time, maybe the car had died in the cold and whoever owned it couldn't afford it to have it repaired. But as spring came, the snow started to melt and the car was still there, parked in the same spot at the end of my boyfriend's street. We passed it almost every day as we walked there from school, and as the days grew warmer, a rotten stench started to rise from the car. I joked to my boyfriend, I bet there is a body in the car, and we laughed it off. But we were curious now. So one day we peered inside the car windows as we passed. The car was messy, but not filled with trash or food. A discarded backpack lay across the seat, and papers were strewn here and there. It just looked like any ordinary car, except we knew that it hadn't moved for months, and the smell was indescribable. The smell continued to get worse as the spring turned to summer. One day, when I couldn't come over for some reason, my boyfriend and his dad decided to investigate the car. They found that the doors were unlocked and the keys were inside the car. That was pretty strange. They went around to the back and popped open the trunk. My boyfriend told me that a swarm of black flies flew up from the inside. The smell was definitely coming from the trunk. Inside were a bunch of black garbage bags. My boyfriend and his dad called the cops at this point. The cops later told us that inside of those bags was rotting meat, cutting to pieces. The first pieces of meat they tested was belonging to a pig, but a few weeks later, my boyfriend's dad got another call. Under the pig meat were the bones of a human child. Whoever left that car sitting unlocked with the keys inside was obviously hoping that the car would be stolen. It still gives me the shivers. Number 
This just happened today, and I'm still pretty creeped out. I'd had my first driving lesson today, and I was pretty worn out after it. I'm also feeling pretty unwell, a bit nauseous, as well as a sore throat and a cough. After the driving lesson, I came home, lay on the couch under a cozy blanket, and began practicing some driving theory from apps I've downloaded. I was home alone. This means there were no cars in the driveway or out in front of my house, and I had the lights on low, as my front room receives a lot of light from the large front window anyway. I'd been sitting there for almost two hours, barely moved, when I heard an aggressive knock on the front door. The postman had already been, and we weren't waiting on any packages to be delivered. I also hadn't heard a car pull up, and this made me assume that it was someone selling something. Recently, our village has been somewhat bombarded with charity workers who, once finished their spiel, tell you that they can't accept cash donations, but instead, you have to sign up for a direct debit and pay at least $12 a month. Being unwell, tired and too embarrassed to reject yet another charity worker, I stayed put and hoped that they'd leave. They knocked twice more, increasingly more loudly than the time before. Eventually, I heard them walk down the front steps, so I crept to the front window to peer through and see who it was and where they'd gone. Except, I couldn't see anybody. I've read enough creepy stories and seen enough scary movies that multiple scenarios niggled at my mind. But as most people would do, I assumed nothing of it and decided to make myself a lunch. I headed through to the kitchen, which I should mention faces the backyard. We have both a large window and a set of patio doors. The curtains were open on both. I immediately caught something out of the corner of my eye, and my vision slid to the window where I saw what looked like the top of someone's head, as if they were crouching as they passed to the window. I froze, but I let my eyes follow until I saw the person appear at the patio doors, clearly ready to attempt to enter. We made eye contact. He was a tall male, big built, wearing what looks like a tracksuit with a black jacket on top. As soon as he realized I was home, he bolted. I heard him run up to the side of my house, so I ran to the front room again, where I saw him continue to sprint down the street and out of sight. Being the big brave girl that I am, I phoned my dad and begged him to return home, which he did. So, weird, creepy man who tried to break into my house. Let's not meet.